Yes. I got one for you. Which one is this? Okay. Um, let me first ask, uh, how tall are you? Five feet, 10 inches. Or 11. <laughs> okay. If, if it's for a casting director. <laughs> All right. Um, are you not five, 10 and a half? Uh, uh, five, you, 10 and a quarter? Nobody believes you when you say that, though. Okay, but you're talking to me. I'm, okay. your, I'm your friend. I'm, I'm five, 10 and a half could work for me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've heard people say, I'm exactly 5'10. And I say, what is what do you mean by that? If I want to just be a pain in the ass. So what do you mean? Well, it came in exactly 5'10. Uh, right. Well, if you look at if you look at a tape measure, okay? Okay. And you go to like 5'10, right? The, the, the mark that indicates 5'10 mm -hmm. has a thickness. Okay. So then are so, you saying so that where that were thickness? You? Wait a minute. Are no. You, no. So what, I'm, what I'm saying is. So you're saying that. You, yeah, what? Where do you fall in the thickness of the mark? Correct. Y and then you, that determines your exact whatever measurement? I, what I'm saying is that if you're measuring something, you can never know the answer exactly. It will only be an approximation that you just agree to mm. and move on. I disagree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's keep going. I, okay. Um, because I think if that what you said were true, we couldn't have that atomic clock you told me about. Oh, well. Ooh, I did, did you remember stuff? I remember things. Okay. Right. So let me tell you about the atomic clock. Okay. Well, when did I tell you about the atomic clock? You told clock? me about the atomic clock and about how the fact that because measurement of time was not at one point precise. Right. Okay. Okay. And that basically you couldn't have, you couldn't have this, you wouldn't have the same time one place as you would the other because you didn't have. Well, the measurement of time. The measurement of time wouldn't okay. be. So we went right. to an atomic time. Right. Rather than Earth's uh, rotation. Earth's rotation. And by the way. And the other thing too was that the Earth's rotation is not the same. We didn't know that. And you can't know that if right. Earth is your measure. This is true. So you offload the precision measurement to an atom, and the atom has very high dependability in its frequency that's vibrating. You get how many times it vibrates per second. It's the cesium atom. You do that, you get that, now you look back at Earth and say, oh my gosh, Earth is slowing down. Right. You could not have known that. Without that, uh, uh, if, if Earth was your me if, if, we're, if okay. Earth were the means of measuring, you would never know that. The, correct. Because the mean itself is actually slowing down. <laughs> correct. Correct. Right. 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 Okay, so all I'm saying is when you make a measurement, you can never know anything precisely. Hmm. You can only know it to some point where you agree. So here's the best example. Okay. It's related to how tall you are. All right. The best example. I ask you, how long is. By the, the way, I'm, I'm six hands. <laughs> that would only be so a hand is four inches. Oh, forget yeah, so it. You, <laughs> I forget the word. I think they, a hand is four inches. I don't know. I, I thought I was okay. using the one where horses, but go ahead. Right, the hand. The hands is, is it? Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, you don't say how many feet tall. How, how many hoofs tall? How many hoofs tall? Are you? <laughs> so the coastline of England. All right. Okay. How long is it? How would you go about finding that out? Well, I would take. You would have to measure the actual. Squiggly line. A squiggly line. Okay. Right. So you get out a map. So that's the you actual map, coastline. Get a nice big map. Right. And you get a squiggly line. You right. can't put a ruler up against it because it's squiggly. Right. So what do you do? You get like a string. Okay. You take the string and you do that. Right. And you come at it. And then when you're done, you, you undo it, it out. And you hold yeah. it up against the scale. You say, oh, it's six, eight hundred miles long. Okay. Whatever. I don't know the exact number. Okay. So there it is. But wait a minute. If I had a bigger map, it would show more squiggles, wouldn't it? Okay. So with a bigger map, I want, if I do this exercise again, my string is doing more as it goes around. Now I got more string and I, a bigger measurement. It's, well, so it's not just that it's a bigger map. Of course, the scale is bigger, but my string did more right. because I got more detail. Okay. So which length of the coastline of England are you going to use? The one from the small map or the one of the bigger map? Probably the one of the Big Mac is gonna be more precise for you. Right. Are you done? No, let's make it even bigger. In fact, let's make a map the size of England. Okay. And now go I don't around think we the coast. We would have to do that because England's there. England's there. <laughs> so now you just, just go around with, with a string. string. No, wait a minute. There's a Which boulder. We, we wait, see, oh, guys, do that. Wait, there's a boulder there. Which uh, side of the boulder are you gonna go around? Uh, wait a minute. The tide is coming in and out. The coastline is the boundary between land and water. But the water is not constant. 
Where are you going to draw that? When then you get down to the to the to the to the sand, which sand grain are you going to go around? What I'm telling you is you're making me not believe in maps. <laughs> what I'm telling you is, <laughs> yeah, you can measure the circumference of Colorado, okay, because it's got square sides. But when you got squiggly lines, that measurement is an agreed upon point where you're going to say, "I give up." Let's just That's call what it, it is. this. All right. That's my point. That's the point. Right, and and you can say, do, oh, you do, is it you make a measure at high tide or at low tide, right, or at in between tide? All right, you you have to pick. You have to at some point you just have to say we're done here. Gotcha. Okay. How much do you weigh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a scale here. All right. I got a scale. This is like a kitchen scale. Okay. And I turn it on. And it measures, you know, I, I, you put- You do the tear you, you, and all you, you that. You do the tear and all that. And it'll say, let's say, three three ounces. Okay. okay. Um, is it three and a quarter ounces? It doesn't register that. It'll only register again when it hits four ounces. True. Right. So it can't measure, this scale cannot measure between three and four ounces. Right. Now, let's get another scale that goes through tenths of an ounce. Okay. So now you get three point- Four. Two ounces, 3.4 right. ounces. Okay. What's the next, 3.5. Suppose it's in between those. Nah, no, okay, it so can't now measure I, that. So now I got a scale that does. Now you got a scale that goes to two decimal places. And you can take that all, all the way down. down. Right. Wait a minute, see now. It's, now, it's, now, it's now, ugly, it see, is ugly. Exactly, because now Be you have made scales and weights into fractals, because I'm like, <laughs> yes. you can just keep yes. going, you keep going all, all the way, way down. through, but you never get. You'll never ever, because there'll always be the Something. thickness of the line that you're doing the measurement with. It will always have a thickness. So you can measure things to some approximation that we all conversationally agree with, but you will never, I don't care what it is. By the way, you can count precisely. Mm -hmm. There are exactly two of us here on this set. Okay? All right. There's not two and a half. We can count that. Are we counting the voices in my head? <laughs> Three and a half. <laughs> you have three quarters of a voice. I got one quarter. We got three. So, so you can count things per second. You cannot measure with unlimited precision. Interesting. Yes. That is that. But see now. Okay. Yeah. Now here's what happened. All right. Just this past year. All right. The kilogram. Something I know nothing about because I'm American. <laughs> America. <laughs> American non-drug dealer. That's right. <laughs> How many kilos? Um, in the international system of measures that keeps track of the length of the second and the length, the duration of a second, the length of a meter, the, and the mass in a kilogram, the, the last thing based on an artifact in that facility was a kilogram. Was the kilogram. Yes. Everything else is based on measurements of, uh, on, on, on highly precise things that you can duplicate in laboratories. Okay. This was an artifact sitting there. That's a kilogram by definition. Right. Okay? Right. They said, we got to, we can't do this anymore. You know why? Because they made copies of it, put them around the world, and every now and then they bring them back, and none of them are equal anymore. Some are losing atoms. They're, they're, so they said, we need, we got to fix this. Uh, so that little thing that you see, that when you when it says it's kilogram, a platinum it's like, thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that, that little cylindrical, cylindrical with the little handle on the top. Well, that's when they're doing the thing. Right. 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 Correct. So you're saying that that no longer is the proper measurement of a kilogram. As of the middle of 2019. That's correct. No longer. Because here's what they did. We have ways of making precise crystals of silicon. Uh-oh. So precise that you can count the atoms in the lattice. That's pretty cool. So what they did was they took the kilogram. That's dope. They, they, it's dope. They took the kilogram, right? and then they made a silicon sphere, pure silicon, and they made them equal each other. Right. Okay. Once you do that, you throw away the, the kilogram. Right. And now I know exactly how many silicon atoms equals a kilogram. So and now I have an atomic representation of what the kilogram measurement is. And I can count the atoms. So there is no uncertainty in the mass of the kilogram right now. Mm. And, and I can tell people around the world, mm -hmm. you want a kilogram, assemble this many silicon atoms. The, and you know what else that also does? Go ahead. It sets Avocado's number. What? Do you remember him? <laughs> That's what. What? Avogadro's number. Do you remember? Oh, Avogadro's <laughs> Avogadro number. Sorry. <laughs> remember, it was 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's how many particles make a mole. Right. All right. Once you set the kilogram with the silicon atoms, 
you set the you set how many part how many particles are in a mole. We set Avogadro's number, and it's now to nine decimal places. That is, amazing. we got this. That's pretty it's cool. Done. That's cool. So it's true for <laughs> everything you measure on the speedometer, your weight, the time, the temperature. There's always some range across the, the indicator where it could be at the bottom, the middle, or the top. Make a thinner one, there's gonna be a bottom, middle, and the top. You will be doing that all the way down. That makes sense. That, that is the sense. world of measurement. So here we go, people. What, what, what have we learned? Believe nothing. <laughs> no, just there's a no. point where we say, we're good, right, you're 5'10", I'm good with that. I'm cool with that. You're not 5'8", you're not six feet, I'm good with it. I'm gonna be 5'8 and say I'm 5'10". Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been a Start Talk Info bit. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, no for worries. For helping me through it. By the way, bite, eight bits. No, isn't it bit, eight bites? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, it depends on what you're eating. <laughs> Keep looking up. <laughs>